everyone and welcome back. So today is the next video in our series all about styles of prayer. Today is a little different. I will actually be interviewing um, our guest today and that will be our Deacon Eric. So Deacon Eric has been with us a while and he is going to be sharing a prayer style that he does every single day. So I hope you enjoy this addition to our prayer styles series and also he mentioned a lot of great resources in this video so please check the description box below to see links to all of those um, different things he talks about throughout our interview have enjoyed this video and of course as always please remember to like this video and hit the little subscribe button so you'll be notified every time we post something new also, if you have an idea for our next prayer style video, please leave that in the comments below. We'd love to hear about prayer styles you might be curious about or things you'd like to know more about. Enjoy this interview with Deacon Eric. Today, I am here with our Deacon Eric, and we're going to talk a little bit more about a style prayer that I'm actually not that familiar with. I don't ever do it, but literally really? of the hour. Have so. you ever done it? I did it many years ago on a retreat. That was one of the things we did on the retreat, but it's been a long time since I mm, did it. Okay. So my first question really is, what is Liturgy of the Hours? Well, the Liturgy of the Hours is exactly what it says. A liturgy, right? Um, just like our Mass is a liturgy. So this is often called, the Liturgy of the Hours are often called the official prayers of the Church because it is a liturgy, it is kind of the number two liturgy behind the Mass, um, and it is something that, it is a style of prayer that as a deacon, when I am ordained, I vow to do this style of prayer in both the morning and the evening. Priests vow to do it. I believe most of the monastic type monks and whatnot do it, like if you go down to, uh, uh, Geneseo, what am I thinking of? The, oh, the Abbey. Uh, if, Where the bread. Right. The bread monks. If you go down to the bread monks, they pray all seven hours. And theirs is fascinating because they actually sing it, which is beautiful, which is beautiful. And you can actually go down and join. I used to do, I would do that on an occasional Saturday. Go to 6 a.m. is their early morning prayer. But you can go down there and the monks are out there praying, lay people are sitting in chairs participating and they've got the prayers there for you. I mean, it is just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh. Because the prayers have done correctly, there's actually seven of them. When they were originally set up, this whole idea with Christ that will pray unceasingly, so they were set up to be prayed every three hours. Oh, okay. So there's actually seven sets of prayers Right, 3 a.m. I think the church finally got rid of the 3 a.m. So you have 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12, noon time, 3 p.m., right? So if you if you pray them all, which th these monks do, you are literally praying all day long. Now, as deacons, we agree to do, we vow to do morning prayer and evening prayer. Right? And I would say for those of you that think you've never done the Liturgy of the Hours, including you, Vicki, you really have. Because when during Lent and Advent, when we do Vesper services, Vespers is really one of the Liturgy of the Hours. And Vespers happens to be the evening prayer. So we call it Vespers. Sue puts it to music. They make it a very beautiful thing. But it's basically evening prayer. Right? And Lodz is morning prayer. So you have done evening prayer. I have. You, just, you just didn't realize it. I didn't. So how so what well, as a deacon, this is part of what you vow to do. It's one of your but so did you start during formation or how did you first start praying them? Yeah, it was actually during formation. Um, as deacons, we would, in addition to taking classes during the week, we would actually gather every Saturday just to take deacon type classes and to get us familiar with the liturgy of the hours we would actually pray that saturday morning and then we would pray it at the end of the day when we left and part of our training was every deacon had to take a turn leading the liturgy of the hours right so 
not only did we have to pray it, but we really, you know, that was a good incentive if you were going to lead it to really know how to do it. Which brings up another thing that's interesting with Liturgy of the Hours. In its purest form, it is meant to be prayed as a community. Right? So people pray it as a deacon. I pray it by myself. But it's, it's really meant to be prayed as a community. So as a deacon, I go down to uh, El Salvador. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for Honduras and that type of trip, we, I have the folks there, we do morning and evening prayer. It's my way of exposing them to the prayer. The, the women that go down to Kentucky and the men that go down to Kentucky, I know they do morning and evening prayer, just as a way of exposing people to it. It's something that used to be just the, uh, something that just that was just expected of deacons and priests, but in Vatican II, the church said, we really want lay people. This is such an important prayer. It's the, uh, it's the prayer of the church, and it's so important. We want everybody to start doing it. So they really started pushing that they wanted lay people to do uh, morning and evening prayer. In fact, I would say if the church had its way, like whenever Father Mike is away, right, I think the church, rather than having a communion service, which is technically supposed to be led by a priest, I think they would rather, the church would rather, that everybody gathered and did the morning, morning, prayer. And did morning prayer. Yeah, absolutely. And so, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful prayer. It is a beautiful prayer. It has, the thing I love about it, um, I don't know if you're going to ask me that question, but I've grown to love it because it has a little bit of everything. Uh, and since we said it was a liturgy and it actually has the feeling of a mass, you do three readings, but in this case, they're psalms. So it's Old Testament, you're doing three readings. It has intercessory prayers. It has a gospel reading. It has the Our Father. Um, you know, the, the flow is very liturgical-like, and it doesn't take an hour to get through everything. I would say is about 10 minutes, oh. about 10 minutes. But I love it because it's got just, like I said, it's got just a little bit of everything going on. And I might be wrong in this, so correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the things I remember hearing about the Liturgy of the Hours is that everyone who prays it, it's the same prayer said. So yes. the prayer we say in the morning is the same for everyone across the world is saying. That is that is one of the uh, one of the beautiful things about it is one, it's it's a liturgy. Two, that's why it's called the official prayer of the church, because it joins you with the entire church. So you are praying with everybody around the world. There's actually um, a couple Google sites that have, you know, one's called Divine Office, where you can actually pull up the prayers for the day. Because again, I'll, I'll show you, it can be pretty kind of, part of the learning it is learning where to go, and you have to flip back and forth from the book, and depending if it's a feast day for a saint or Advent, or I mean, it can get like really complicated where you have to go but today's modern world it's nice you can google you can pull up the divine office and it has the prayers there for that day but what i think is interesting is at the very bottom of the prayer on this website they've got this little box that says number of people praying with you you know and you'll look down there and you'll see six thousand or whatever it is that are currently logged into that website and praying for that day which is gives you an idea of the universality of that of that prayer that's very cool. Yeah, no, no, it really is cool. Really so, is cool. when this, if you're watching this on YouTube, I will link those websites in the description box below, so you can go right there and check them out. Yeah, because you know what I was going to point out here is here's a couple. Um, there's actually three versions of the oh, liturgy okay. of the hours, and I don't know if our church has one, but the official one is huge. It's four volumes because it has. Prayers for every day in ordinary time, prayers for every day in Advent, prayers in every day for Lent, prayers for every day in Christmas, prayers for every day in Easter, prayers for every day that a saint, I mean, huge. And, and you take that, you multiply all those prayers times seven, because I said there were seven prayers, wow. or you can imagine, it takes four volumes to, to list all the prayers. Now, most of us deacons and priests, we do not use that for buying. Well, one, as a deacon, I'm only doing morning and evening prayer and feet. So this kind of little thicker book right here mm -hmm. is if I were doing it with just the book, this is the book I, I used as a deacon and that and, and most people will use. And it, it has what I'm going to call the regular, they call it the Psalter, which is the Psalms. There's a four-week cycle, by the way. 
Okay. Right? So you go four weeks, and after four weeks, you start kind of back at, at the beginning. Um, and that's in ordinary time, obviously, special prayers for Lent or whatever. But this is like a little bit, a little bit thick, right? Because it's got saints, feast days, and some of those. Okay. It's only got morning and evening prayer, but when you add in Lent and Advent and all that, it gets a little bit thick. So, and you maybe heard the word breviary? Yes. This is a breviary. Oh. Okay. I was trying to look up what breviary meant, and it just said, oh, it comes from the Latin word breviarium. But I, I got to think it means brief or, you know, yes. shorter, right? Because you got four volumes here. You've only got this little thing. This is a briefer version of the big official, right? I think that's why they call it a breviary, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't. What do I know? I'm just a deacon. Um, so there, there's that. This is what I use when I'm not doing something online. Like if I, you know, if I'm traveling and I need to look, and I don't think I'm going to have access to a computer. And you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five bookmarks and seven ribbons. <laughs> That's how complicated it is going. And you're just switching oh, back. Oh, you're switching back, yeah. When, when I first started as a deacon, it was amazing because they don't like give you a class on how to do this. You just had to figure it out yourself. So that's why I went out and bought this book, oh. The Divine Office for Dodos by Sister Madeline Pecora Nugent. And she walks through a simple way on how to, to, to learn. To actually find all those things. Yeah. And, and the weird thing is... Like when you go into the prayer, they like sometimes, like the beginning of the prayer, they just assume you know it, so they don't print it. Oh. And then they got like half of it printed. And so like, if you're just like looking through this, you you would think it's <laughs> like, there's, yeah, it's really easy to get, it's very easy to get confused. That's why it takes a, a, a little bit of practice and I needed that book. Luckily, if you pull it up, that's the one nice thing about pulling it up on the computer screen. You pull it up there, they got everything there. You don't have to figure it out. But I'm glad I did this first so that I kind of understand it. I know. Right? Um, what we have here, Transfiguration, has, you can see, this is Liturgy of the Hours too, and you can see it's a lot even thinner than the breviary. Yeah. Um, this is the one when the men go down to Kentucky, and when I go to El Salvador, we got like a box of about, 40 or 50 of them in the liturgy room. This is the same thing as this, except it only has the four week Psalter. Oh, okay. So it doesn't have all the, I think it's got one set of prayers for Advent, one set of prayers for Lent, but not all like the feast days. And, so it's just kind of the main ordinary time prayers. That's why this is so much shorter. But when we go on retreat, this more than serves its purpose. That's probably more than you wanted to know. Huh? No, wow. And I have this little thing. If anybody's ever interested, I got like about a hundred of these. So when I go on retreat, I hand them out. And this is all about the Liturgy of the Hours okay. and, and encouraging people to pray. It says, Liturgy of the Hours, sharing your day with God. It says, too busy to pray. Using this prayer can build a daily rhythm that fits even the busiest schedule. So... And it kind of goes through some of the stuff we talked about it, mm -hmm. right? It's a liturgy, what makes it special, what you talked about. It unites us with the church universal. Um, it's liturgical, right? Liturgy of the hours. It's scriptural. All the prayers are coming out of it. And it's actually kind of nice. What's unique about this is mostly you're praying psalms, mm -hmm. which are Old Testament, right? And we don't get a lot of... As Christians, we tend to not like Old Testament because sometimes there's some language in there that, you know, God's smiting nations and stuff like that. Um, but the Psalms can be beautiful because very often the Psalms are the prayers of the people struggling to understand God, right? When you read the Psalms, people are, God, why have you abandoned me? Or I'm so angry. Or where are you in my life? All those kinds of things that we struggle through, that's what's in the Psalms. And not only that, in Jesus' time, those are what he would have prayed, right? Obviously, there was no New Testament for Jesus. So when he prayed, he would have, scripture-wise, all he would have had was an Old Testament. He would have prayed the Psalms. So it's beautiful for that. And then the, the last thing this thing mentions is that from the, the liturgy hours just flows right into Mass. So if you were doing this daily, you're basically doing a liturgy every day, right? And then the mass becomes the mass becomes kind of the liturgy of liturgies for the week. So it is just it's it's just it's beautiful. Yeah.
it truly becomes that little Easter we always talk about the liturgy being that yeah. high exciting point of everything. Yes, exactly. So if someone was interested in trying out the liturgy of the hours, how would you like as someone who had to learn it and went through everything, what would be your first steps for someone? Um I would say that, like, like, do they want to learn it just to do it? Because then you could just pull something up on the computer, right? You could go to one of these websites you're going to link to, and you can just read it. Um, I always encourage people to learn how to pray with one of these two books, okay. right? Um, I know Meg was interested in starting to do this for the women down in Kentucky, and she had never done Liturgy of the Hours or didn't know much about it. So I... Gave her one of these little, she got one of these short little books from the liturgy room. Uh -huh. I gave her this book right here to read. And then her and I actually met for a while just to practice. So I think once you get into the flow, it starts to become more understandable. So I would say one, you could just go to a website. Or two, you can go to Amazon. Yeah. This is called Short Christian Prayer. You can go to Amazon order this, and it's not very expensive. I would order something like the Divine Office for Godos that goes with it, and then just start practicing. And the way I actually practice is I would do the prayer this way, and then I'd look it up on the computer and say, oh, did I miss that? Yeah, did I miss any stuff? Oh, they did this, I forgot about that, or maybe I went to the wrong prayer because I was thinking we were in the Psalter and I forgot that maybe it was uh, some saints are more important than others, so like on certain saints' day, you need to do substitute in some prayers, and so that's how I would do it. So I would actually do it on my own, and then double check myself by by going to the uh, going to the computer. But I wanted to get good because very often, and I found this to be very true in my ministry here, as I've mentioned, I've used it so many times. I want to make sure when I'm leading people through it, I kind of know what I'm yes. doing, right? I kind of report that. Um, one other thing, because you've been praying it for a while, what has been your, what has been the greatest gift of the style of prayer in your life that you've experienced the longer you do it? I think the, well, that's a good question. Um, I think the greatest gift for me is one, getting familiar with the Psalms. Or get, and, and I say that from the standpoint that I don't get a lot of exposure to Old Testament, mm -hmm. right? Even when I'm preaching, what am I? I'm always you know, good news of the gospel, right? And the gospels are very important, right? But we don't get a lot of exposure to, like, like I said, the Old Testament, and sometimes the language is kind of bothersome, and right? So it's given me a wonderful exposure to the Old Testament, which is a great gift. And the Psalms, where I see people struggling with their views and their relationship with God, just like we are today, right? You look at it and you go, wow, things haven't changed in 2,000 years. It's hard. It's good, to, it's good to see people having those exact same issues. I think the second greatest gift for me is that the fact that, that it's a liturgy, it kind of reminds me to do stuff. Like, you know how sometimes you run into somebody and they're having an issue or somebody's sick in their family and they say, oh, keep my aunt Marjorie in your prayers. And I'll always say, oh yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Well, normally, I'm, I might forget. Like, when am I going to, other than the Sunday liturgy where we say who, since the liturgy of the hours actually has intercessory prayers, when I get to the intercessory prayers, I make sure I add my own, who am I praying for today, right? So it's a good reminder for me to pray for other people, and that has been... Just a wonderful gift, too. That makes sense? Yeah, no, that makes complete sense. It was one of the things, and I will link it up here. Um, we talked about sharing prayer and how do we pray for others in a comfortable way. So I think, and that prayer, how important that is for us. Yeah, and you know, when I said that this is meant to be done in community, this prayer is actually meant to be done what they call in choir. Uh, so if you have a bunch of people, not that you're singing it, but the prayers in You've probably experienced where you have people go around the table and they, they maybe do a different part of the prayer. Well, it's the same thing with the liturgy of the hours. When you get into the Psalms, you want, there's a flow where maybe this side of the room does this one, this side of the room does the next the next paragraph, 
and it goes and it kind of goes back and forth and has just a beautiful flow to it. And like I said, if you go down to Geneseo, the monks, they do sing it, and they sing it so beautifully. So, oh, it's just, yeah. Awesome. Well, I am at the end of my questions, but thank you. Anything else, Bob, you'd like to share? The only thing I want to say is um, give it a try. It really is a beautiful set of prayers. Go to these links that Vicky's, you know, gonna gonna hook you up with, and really try it. Especially for people that are trying to figure out how am I gonna pray every day. And sometimes I'm gonna say. Freeform prayer is great, you know, where we want to sit down and just, whether it's contemplative and just think about it. But man, some days I'm just tired and I just don't have to, and, and some days it's nice to just have the words for you. And so I find it just, again, 10 minutes. So, so this is a great way. If you told somebody, hey, if you want to start your prayer off, just start 10 minutes a day. This is a great way to start 10 minutes a day. So what I actually do is I combine both of them. I pray this for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. and then I take 15 or 20 minutes then to do contemplative prayer where I'm just being present with God and trying to listen to the Holy Spirit or, or do whatever. So I use it as a, as a combination of both. So that's what I would say. Try it. Beautiful prayer. It's a prayer that the church wants you to do, wants you to all be priests. If you're ever within a group of people, it's not like a deacon or a priest has to lead a layperson can lead the liturgy of the hours. And if you ever have a question or you need some help, feel free to contact me. Yes. I don't know if it's coming through or not, but I'm very enthusiastic yeah. about the liturgy of the hours. I love it as a prayer. So, you know, call me or email me or, you know, grab me after Mass when you see me and I will, I'll help you through it. Beautiful stuff.